The traditional barriers to building a company have evaporated, and we are witnessing a remarkable level of business and product innovation. Entrepreneurs have harnessed technology, talent, and capital to deliver an undeniably exciting set of products and services. So the question is, what is the next frontier in the funding of startup entrepreneurs? My name is Jim Connor. Welcome to Game Changer Silicon Valley. This segment of tonight's show will address crowdfunding, where just about anyone could be an investor in a startup company. My guests are Manny Fernandez, founder and CEO of DreamFunded, Bo Rogers, CEO and founder of VetTech, and Bill Reichert, founder and managing director of Garage Ventures. Manny, Bill, Bo, welcome to the show. Let's start with you, Manny, to give us a definition, at least your definition, of crowdfunding. Crowdfunding, as many people know it, is like Indiegogo or Kickstarter where you would back a campaign for a product of some sort. Uh, but and then there's equity crowdfunding where you are making an investment in exchange for a part of the company. Well, I have the impression that there's, you, have a, you have a platform that brings uh, together investors for yes. companies, right? And there are lots of platforms. There's AngelList, and we've seen them all out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bo and Bill here are uh, basically investors of one sort or another uh -huh. in these startup companies. And uh, what we're seeing is, yes, there is the Indiegogo type where people kind sure. of buy a T-shirt, if you will, yeah. or buy a future product that may or may not be delivered. Yes. But there is the accredited investor, opportun the opportunity for accredited investors to participate on a platform like AngelList or Refunded to bring together uh, monies, to aggregate money for an investment. Sure. Is that correct? Absolutely. And that's what you're doing, right? Yes, that's what we're doing at Dream Funded, allowing yeah. accredited investors to invest in top tier startups or later stage companies. Bo, you're a, um, how many companies are in your, your operation? There are 55 now. And why don't you tell us a little bit about Vet Tech, what you're doing? Uh, I served uh, in Vietnam and uh, learned quickly that uh, veterans can execute. Military veterans know how to execute. And if you go to Sand Hill Road and are familiar with what Bill does, one of the key things is looking at a team that can execute. Because you can have a great idea, but if the team can't execute. I thought those were excellent ideas, and so not totally altruistically, as years went by in Silicon Valley, I decided to build a company called VetTech to find, develop, and fund veteran-led high-tech startups. I ran a company in Israel okay, as a chief operating officer, and I noticed quickly in Israel that 90% of the commercialized technology came out of the Israeli army. And here we are in the United States with the Naval Academy, West Point, Air Force Academy, smart young enlisted people coming out, and we really don't channel that energy into building quality companies that can execute. In essence, that's what VetTech does. And, and let me qualify that. They're not all soup yet. However, in the last six months, we've gotten five funded for $3.2 million. We've helped them get funded, and that's why I have a contribution relative to the crowdfunding. And one data point that I thought was neat, when I looked into crowdfunding, the Statue of Liberty was crowdfunded. Okay, so 100 years ago, that's this it. has been going on. That's great. Bill, Bingo. managing director, founder, co-founder of uh, Garage Ventures. Um, what's your focus right now these days and relative to what you do on your own as, uh, in, in, the, in the venture business and yeah. how yeah, you, yeah. you crowdfund it? Yeah, so Garage has always been a technology agnostic seed and early stage funder. Um, and we actually crowdsource innovation was the original big idea of Garage, which is if you cast the net very broadly to innovators and entrepreneurs all over the planet to find the next big thing, then that would be the best way to bubble up the most interesting technologies. When we started Garage, we were trying to fill the gap between the institutional venture capital and this new emerging market of angel investors. So all of a sudden, there were all these rich people that wanted to invest in high technology. So when we launched Garage, our big idea was to give entrepreneurs and angels an opportunity to play in a more open, more democratic funding environment. There's a huge regulatory overlay on this whole thing that has become a dominant piece of the conversation. But as Bo points out, Crowdfunding is not at all new, it's just that the technologies and the regulations around it keep evolving, and that causes all sorts of interesting new things mm -hmm. to come, to happen. So, so how far, are, are your companies involved in crowdfunding, or are you involved in finding the normal way a lead investor, then you syndicate that deal among other interest, interested investors? So private placement is obviously the sweat equity of what you do in Silicon Valley, and we're trying to do that. I think for us, we see that crowdfunding, if you have a really a tier one company, 
good team, good technology, good IP, all the things we know. I'm not sure that crowdfunding is for that company. It may, it may challenge the overall underpinnings of their private placement. For us, we think crowdfunding can help some of our, our earlier stage companies because if you do it right, it's a great marketing vehicle as well. There's a potential to show off your company in a proper way that you wouldn't have had, you know, as Bill said, the internet, the evolution of crowdfunding to get a lot of eyeballs to look at your technology. Mm -hmm. So we use it in both of those ways. Okay. So Manny, where is DreamFunded now then? Are you, are you you're trying to use the platform to bring in accredited investors only? What are the differences among these many platforms? I, we talked about that a little earlier and you gave me some insights. Sure. Where we focus is that uh, we're a closed platform, so when you make an investment, the whole world doesn't know, like Angel's List. And we have more later stage investment opportunities, and, and as well as allow employees or early investors to be able to sell their investments. So it's unique because many of the platforms are just strictly primary. You can invest and you just hope so some days down the road you'll get a return on your money. So how do you en enable somebody in your platform to sell their position? Well, 366 days they are able to sell. There's 365 days oh. they can't. So yeah. after 366 days they can sell. So this is kind of interesting. You've got a diversity of uh, operations here. You've got the crowdfunding to find the investors and yes. then it looks like you're operating a little bit of a secondary market private yes. investor secondary market, is that accurate? That is accurate, and but again, we still f do a primary investments in a later stage. We've done a few in the earlier stages, yeah. but based on the feedback of our 4,200 plus accredited investors, they wanted a little bit less risk, potential three times return, so we focus in on the later stage to help them because there's many platforms that help you invest in the earliest stages. Is this a series B or C or Series A, or what, what level is this uh, investment? Well, primarily we've been involved in Series B, Series C. And is uh, each individual in there at their level they want to be in there, correct? Well, the minimum is $5,000. 5000 minimum. 5000 okay. Credited investor anywhere from the, around the world, and and we aggregate the capital. There's no maximum, but our minimum is five k and sometimes it's 1K, so it just depends on the investment. Bill, what's your perspective of this? I have to ask you if you <coughs> have an opinion. It's a natural evolution that, and there should, it should be enabled to let as many people have access to this innovation economy as possible. Um, and so I love seeing all these different innovations, you know, from the, the crowd marketing, Kickstarter and Indiegogo, to the equity crowdfunding, to the secondary markets. It absolutely makes sense. Um, you know, the big concern is all these things tend to be going great during the upswing, you know, during the bubble years, and, and there's a lot of enthusiasm, and, you know, we've seen now a few cycles. Question is, it, when will this cycle end, when will the music stop, and then what will happen? The uh, regulations from the SEC are out, and I'll mm -hmm. ask you, Bo, would you be open to uh, unaccredited investors? Well, I have a different position. I absolutely would because I'm playing a bit to the heartstrings of the veteran. Mm -hmm. Here, you may not have an accredited investor, but you may have somebody who's passionately interested in helping a veteran. So absolutely, I think that plays to our opportunity. Are there some, uh, I'll go back to you, Manny, go corporate governance issues in this area of uh, the, how your, you represent the investors in this company on your platform? In other words, there's information rights that companies should give out, you'd get those and pass those back. How do you manage that part? Well, we basically operate some type, just like a online VC firm. So a lead investor will invest, say a Tim Draper or large VC firm, and we co-invest. So whatever information that we tend to get, we send out to our investors in that specific fund. We create a fund per investment, and we're just following under 506 B. So um, you're a B, but if the, we're going to get into the weeds a little bit, if you're, a, yeah. you're, you're investing in these so-called 506 B companies, what if the company becomes a 506 C as in Charlie company, meaning it's gone out and undertaken general solicitation? Well, we haven't touched that at this stage, and yeah. I think many of the angel groups hasn't touched the 506 C either. Um, 506 C means uh, you have to verify that they're a accredited investor based on an independent source such as a CPA or, or a letter from an attorney. And uh, we just haven't seen any uh, good companies use that yet. The, this regulatory thing is going to cause a lot of challenges for some companies. I mean, I think, and that's you know one of the big questions that we have, uh, you know, when we're looking at companies and when we're talking to entrepreneurs is, do we encourage or discourage them from pursuing crowdfunding? And you know, one of the challenges for a small company is the compliance issue and the investor communications issue and the you know providing information issue. 
And, and so, I mean, the jury's out at this point as to whether or not that's going to be a significant problem um, for anyone. But I think, you know, the, the opportunity for an entrepreneur who can't pull together friends and family enough any other way is to get started using this kind of platform. But I think at the, at the sort of big player level, there's going to be a tendency to discourage entrepreneurs yeah. from, from crowdfunding because of these uncertainties, uncertainties. regarding all of the um, compliance yeah. and communications sure. issues. So, Bo, what's, uh, what's coming up here with your 55 companies? Are you going to continue to build that portfolio up? Or are you going to settle down and just work with those 55? We're exactly like any VC firm. We're certainly not at that level from a sophistication and a, and a money backing standpoint, but I think it's a funnel. The more good opportunities you get in, and we were, Bill and I were talking earlier about this, how do you filter these companies? What's some kind of a, an evaluation algorithmically you can look to see, are these in the right space? Is this current? Is this moving forward? So we absolutely do it. We think we serve a good purpose. I hate to say this, but I'm back in Washington trying to get Washington and, and Penny Pritzker, Secretary of Commerce, to say, you know, this creates jobs. This is what this is all about. Startups are creating jobs. So in brief, we're really trying to push as many coming in. And, and very honestly, if they don't have the ability to scale, if they can't, they're a microbrewery or something like that, we really recommend other alternatives. But we want to be open to everybody and not to not turn them away. Bill, what's on your plate here for the next uh, six to 12 months? First, I just want to say, don't discount microbreweries. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were, uh, you know, I knew the guys at Pete's Wicked Ale when they started out. But great, 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 yeah. great ale. Um, yeah. In any case, you know, on our plate in the next six, you know, six to 12 to 18 months, you know, it's it's um, the ecosystem here is just is just enormous, and there's so much innovation just here. And our thesis is we want to reach innovation around the planet. So you know, our eyes are so much bigger than our stomach, right? <laughs> and so, you know, to this discussion, we are looking for partners and networks of investors to help us digest all of this extraordinary innovation that's going on. And Manny, what, what's the next step for you? You're, you're in this now. You've got about three or four plates all spinning you know, between the various activities. Uh. No, we're getting bigger and bigger. So yeah. we're excited about our growth. We're excited about the very big names that are on our platform. And um, we're really optimistic what's going to happen in the next 24 to 36 months to some of our companies. OK. They're very big. Great. So I want to thank you both for coming in. Very nice to thank see you. Thank you, Jim, again. and thanks to these gentlemen. It was Bill, a pleasure. Yeah. Good working with you. Bill, always a pleasure to see you again. And uh, touch Looking base. forward to continuing working with you. Yeah, and Manny, <laughs> I, uh, I'm impressed with the progress you've made. And, uh, you know, this sounds like you may be at the forefront of some of these evolving and emerging uh, opportunities. I wish you every success going forward in this. Thank you so very <laughs> much. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Game Changers, Silicon Valley. Each week, we'll address an area of innovation that may emerge as a game changer of tomorrow. You can follow us on our Facebook account or subscribe to our YouTube channel. We look forward to your continued interest and participation in upcoming shows. Mm -hmm.